Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the shop once again. Um, today we're working on a 99, 98 F-150. Lots of different work on it, but what I am also changing is both the front and the rear O2 sensor. And this one back here is dead completely. The front one is lazy. Um, uh, OBD2 actually monitors O2 sensors for responsiveness. Uh, so we're changing both of them on this bank. But this one's really easy to show you what I do to get these out without stripping the threads in the bung uh, welded onto the pipe here. Okay, You want to get them out without stripping anything. You want to get them out one piece. Now what you want to do first off, first off, first off, is disconnected from the body main harness. Get disconnected so it's by itself, sitting there all by itself. No matter what you're doing, if you're changing an O2 sensor out, the very first thing you wanna do is cut the wires. Trust me, you don't need it anymore. It's done for, cut the freaking wires. Okay, now it's just the sensor by itself. Now when you're trying to remove one of these, um, you know, a rust penetrant of sorts, like the Mopar one I use, is good to spray on there, get it going, get it soaking. But in the end, I find heat is your best option. Either propane or, better off, I can't even show you. There you go, map gas. That is the way to do it. We can get it nice and hot that way, and uh, it'll come out of here without damaging the threads. Now there's a couple different specialty tools that are out there to get these off even with the wires on. And you can see a slit in the side for the wires so you fold the wires over and then you put it on there. And this way you have a hex and you have um, you know, a square drive in this end for a ratchet. Now this doesn't work in all situations. Sometimes these are way buried up in there. In those situations something like this works even better. From Mac Tools, it's a, basically the same thing, but it's a stubby. It has a slot for the wires, goes all the way down. You can get a breaker on here or something like that, and position it just right. You can use both sides of the square drive um, to actually get it out. It depends on your situation, but if you're changing it, 90% of the time you can use a standard um, 7 8 box end. And I say box end. You don't want to get in here and try to loosen it with the open end. You're saving the wires or whatever you're doing. You're going to round it. You're going to round it. Cut the wires so that this will slip over and it's angled. So you can use it different ways depending on where it's located. And we're going to get it on there. This way we're touching all sides on there. Now at first what you can do is get a hammer and just start tapping this wrench. Try to loosen it, okay? That's the best way instead of just pulling on it, okay? What we're gonna do is a combination. We're gonna use the map gas. Okay? Watch the surrounding area. And you're gonna need to keep it on here for a while because you all the metal from the exhaust that's soaking it up. Okay, so at first, what you're gonna wanna do is get it all the way on there, okay, just like so. Hold it on nice and straight, we'll tap. We'll tap with our hammer, okay? Try to get it on there nice and straight. Okay, you may need to go to a three pound sledge and tap on it, okay? You want to keep it on nice and straight. And you can see it's moving on there. Now it's not moving so well uh, because it's just it's just so corroded in there. These are original and this thing is you know 20 years old now. So we're gonna use a little more heat. And it usually doesn't require too much. Put it back on there. Okay, and look at that, see? I'm not even hitting it anymore. It's coming right out. 
Now when they're really dry like this, um, and it's heated up, a lot of guys, they use a, a piece of a, you know, a candle, they'll put it on here, right here, and they'll let it melt, and it'll seep into the threads, and it will uh, get those dry threads lubricated. Uh, I need to get me some of those, but yeah, that is an option. If you see, they're really dry like this. You don't want the housing coming apart on there. For me, we're gonna keep heating it, and just get it out of there in one piece. Now what I found is that WD-40 helps a lot, lubricates it, okay? But it doesn't really combust. It seems to smoke a lot and that's it. Now what you're also going to want to do, like this one's binding up a little bit, that's because of all the corrosion. We're simply going to move it back and forth, back and forth. And you can see how much, that, how much better it is already. I mean, it's just moving. No sweat at this point. The one thing you don't want to do, because these threads are going to be dry, they're going to dry and toasted and, and rusted, you don't want, even if you have the access, you don't want to use an impact on it or anything that's going to spin it fast. That's going to actually go on threads, and then they're going to cross thread, and then you're going to be out of luck. Okay? Uh, you don't want to do that. Trust me, I have experience. See, it's buying up a little bit there. We're simply going to bring it back and forth. But that's the idea. You got to be nice about it. You can't rush it. And it is possible to get these out of here. Look how, look how easy it is to move now just because I moved it back and forth a few times. Cleaning those threads off, letting all that rust and corrosion get out of the way so we don't uh, you know, cross thread anything. And we'll move it a little more. Oh, cross thread. It's uh, getting tight again. Threads are filling up because these are like a fine thread. You got to remember that too. And then I'll work it back and forth once again. Okay. And it's just going to get easier and easier as, you, as it comes out. Because there's less threads in there to bind uh, with all the corrosion. So like right now it's pretty darn easy, but I'm going to work it anyways, just so we don't damage the threads. Now, if yours is this bad, you may want to have a thread chaser on hand. Uh, but heating it up and cleaning it like this, that's the key here. That'll make sure there's no problems in the end. And look at that, just by taking the time to clean it, it really moves out of there. Look at that. Yep. That's uh, coming right out now. At this point, and you know, when it's coming off this easy, why not? You know, get the, the, the open end going here and we can get it out even faster that way. We already know it's moving out of here pretty darn easy. There's not going to be any problems. But anyways, so that's what I wanted to show you guys. Just because uh, I know what a frustration, frustrating job can be when you're just changing an O2 sensor, trying to fix that check engine light or whatever, and now you're dealing with welding and everything else. It's a nightmare. Take the time. We can get it off of here. There we go. Yeah. That was original. All right, another quick tip for you guys. Once it's out of these threads, you want to inspect them, of course. You also want to clean them out. When you backed it out of there, of course, it cleaned the threads as it came out, uh, but there's a lot of debris in there now. Now, since we're talking about O2 sensors, uh, the ones you want to get, in my experience, no matter what, is the Motorcraft ones. A lot of these have a certain calibration attached to them, uh, just for a certain, you know, 49 state or California, 
uh, and of course the different engine sizes and all that good stuff, engine calibrations that they come out with. So what you wanna use is just the Motorcraft ones and be done, you won't have any problems afterwards. These ones, they'll come with anti-seize on like that, so it's good to go, and that's gonna help us lubricate it as we thread it back in. Now again, these are should only be threaded in by hand. So you have that good feel, like so. And they should go in, you know, quite a bit. I gotta watch it, this one's still hot. And then at that point, you can just take your wrench, as long as it's cool, and we can now use the open end uh, to get it on there. And this one's, you know, it, the threads aren't perfect, uh, but they're definitely, it's definitely threading in there just fine. It's just so dry in there, we're kind of getting past it. And then when you get down so far, there is a gasket on these O2 sensors. Um, so you'll feel it kind of bottom out and give. That's the gasket or washer uh, crushing on there. And you want to continue uh, until it's fully crushed and then, you know, it keeps it leak free. See, now it's like really good. We have that lubrication throughout the length of the threads. It's like right there we're contacting. And now we want to crush. And you'll feel it crushing, crushing, crushing. And then you're gonna basically feel it dead stop. That's all you need to do. And then of course take the other end and we'll plug it back into the body main harness. Until it clicks, make sure your wire is out of the way. It's not gonna rub on anything like hot exhaust components and you are good to go. And there you have it. After 20 years, we were able to take the old one out and get the new one back in without any damage or problems, no mess, no fuss. Just taking a few precautions to make sure it happens this way. If you guys like this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe down below. Also, we're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook where I post stuff just about daily about what I'm working on, tips and tricks, all that good stuff, anything Ford related. I'll see you guys next time.